this is an E and this is an F and we still haven't found why is that so. Last time we saw the harmonic series and we also saw that some overtones are suspiciously similar to what we call today the dominant chord. In relation to the fundamental, the third harmonic, the fifth and the seventh have the same ratio as the major third, the perfect fifth and the dominant seventh. But wait a minute, why do we call them third, fifth, octave, seventh, even if they have clearly a different harmonic number? We will get to that. If we want to listen to those partial closer to the fundamental, we can divide their frequencies by two or four. When we do so, we are no longer tricked to perceive them as part of the same timber, but we rather perceive them as individual sounds forming a chord. A difference between two frequencies is an interval, and a bunch of intervals form a scale. For example, a five note scale is a pentatonic, and the classic major scale, western major scale, has seven intervals, and the western chromatic scale has 12 intervals. Many other musical traditions have even more intervals, and by the end of this video we will see how we came up with the number 12 in the western context. Many of the things I will discuss today were also known by other cultures, for example the Chinese one, but I will limit myself to a brief credit here because I admit a quite large knowledge gap on Chinese traditional music. On top of that, as far as I know, there is no evidence of a direct contact between the Chinese music theory and the Western musical development. I will focus instead on the genesis of the 12 note equal temperament scale, which is a basically Western concept, and I will see how the Europeans came to it. But if you know other cultures that achieved similar results, let me know in the comments below. The intervals that today we call fourth, fifth, and octaves were known by the ancient Greeks and even by the Mesopotamians thousands of years ago. For the ancient Greeks, the most important interval was today's perfect fourth, which was divided by two other notes in between and formed the so-called tetrachord. So the space between the first and the last note was fixed and the space between the other two was variable from a whole tone to a quarter tone using today's names. This music was used to accompany tragedies, poetry and other sung exhibitions, but the evolution of Greek music moved on two parallel roads, the practical needs on one side and the mathematical explorations on the other. In fact, it soon became clear to the Greeks that the good sounding intervals like the fourths, fifths or octaves were also characterized by a mathematical ratio. The first note was called hypate, the fourth mese, and the fifth paramese, and the octave nete. One could have achieved the intervals past the fourth by just stacking another tetrachord after a whole tone. To simplify a very complex matter, further complicated by the obvious lack of recorded material of ancient Greece, we can say that their practice of dividing a fixed interval into different smaller intervals, united with their uh, research on the mathematics of music, led to the development of seven note scales that divided an octave into various combinations of intervals. For example, the tone, which is an interval with a proportion of 9 to 8 and the semitone which is roughly 256 over 243. Flash forward, by the 9th century, in fact, the Gregorian chants were based on different arrays of tones and semitones called modes. By then, the octave became the most important interval, basically replacing the tetrachord. Guido d'Arezzo reportedly was the first one to assign a name to the seven notes of a major scale, starting from C. This led to today's practice of naming intervals based on a seven note scale. For example, the space between a C and a G is called fifth, even though there are seven semitones and a theoretical frequency ratio of 1.5. But where does the 12 semitone comes from? Where does the number 12 come from? Well, if you start uh, multiplying frequencies by 1.5, thus obtaining a series of ascending fifths, each perfectly consonant with the previous one, you can create a series of intervals that eventually, after 12 multiplication, returns to roughly the same note of the beginning. This is today's circle of fifths and it explains why we are so obsessed with 12 notes in the West. But it carries a huge, huge problem. 
If we transpose all of these frequencies down to the same octaves, it is true that we obtain a 12 note scale, but the space between each interval is not the same. If you multiply a frequency by 1.5 for 12 times and then multiply the same frequency by 2 for 7 times, we don't obtain the same frequency. There is a difference of 26 cents, known as Pythagorean comma. There is evidence that Euclid was the first to find the Pythagorean comma around the 4th century BC and that it was already known by the Chinese mathematician around the 2nd century BC. However, at least in Greece, the 12 fifths were more a theoretical concept than a practical tool, since the scale was mainly a 7 note scheme. The circle of fifth as a map of all the possible notes appeared in Europe only around the 6th century with the complex music of Baroque era. The concept of getting 12 notes out of the circle of fifths together with the practice of uh, combining tones and semitones into seven note scales led to considering the semitone the smallest interval. However, tuning 12 semitones in one octave so that everyone sounds good with everyone else is physically impossible for the reasons introduced by the Pythagorean comma. In Europe, people tried two solutions. The first one was to tune as many intervals as possible so that they sounded good and then hide the worst one between two notes that you almost never used. For example, the Pythagorean tuning based on C has 11 perfect fifth and a single terrible fifth between G flat and D flat. This tuning practice has the advantage of having perfect fifths, but the other intervals are rather problematic and you are also quite limited as for how many notes you can actually play. The same is true for similar tunings based on different intervals, for example perfect thirds or the modern just intonation. The other approach slightly detuned every interval as to split the ugly Pythagorean comma into more tolerable, less than perfect intervals. This practice is called temperament instead of tuning, as in the attempt of tempering or taming the dissonance. During the Renaissance and the Baroque periods, uh, many musical theorists tried to find the best temperament. This was especially true for fretted instruments and keyboard instruments, so that you didn't have to retune your instrument if you wanted to play into a different tonality. This led to some interesting abominations that we will leave outside this video for now, but if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. What I just said also implies the concept of tonality that we will discuss in another video. For now, we are going to say that eventually the European found a way to spread the comma across every interval of the scale, thus creating a 12 note scale where every interval except the octave is slightly out of tune by a very almost unnoticeable amount. This practice eventually led to the development of the 12 note equal temperament, which became a staple of European music. It calculates every semitone ratio as in the 12th root of 2, so that every semitone is equal. And despite not having a single perfect interval except the octave, it didn't have any terrible dissonance either. I also found that the 12th root of 2 might also be traced to the 1581 treatise by the Chinese prince Zhu Zayu, but I haven't been able to find reliable sources that this discovery and the later European one were actually linked. If you know more, post a source in the comments and I will pin it. Okay, so right now I have two very annoying sequences playing in unison on the Usta sequencer. They are playing a chromatic scale in the 12 tone equal temperament. Track 1 and 2 are the same and they are controlling the oscillator, the yellow and the green oscillator respectively and we are mixing them on the CGM. Now, as you can hear, a part of some natural minor drifts on a few notes due to the analog nature of uh, this system here they track pretty much in sync in unison and there are almost no beats now i want to select the track to open the track menu just for one track it can be either one or two and I want to select the tones per octave menu voice and change the menu setting from 12 Edo, which is the equal division of octave, the equal temperament we've been talking about, where all the uh, semitones are the same. And I want to select the 12 user one, which is a custom temperament that I programmed uh, to mimic the Pythagorean tuning. 
so all the intervals won't be the same. And you can perceive the difference between some intervals like the first, which are pretty much in sync, and this and this, which are uh, quite uh, out of tune. And I want to do another experiment and I set both tracks to uh, the custom temperament at the Pythagorean scale. They are pretty much in unison as always, but I want to select my... Um, I want to demonstrate how changing the root note of a tuning changes its interval. So I will keep this melody steady, this scale going up and down, and I will hold the um, and navigation encoder to access the project menu and uh, I will scroll until I find the temperament voice which now is set to absolute and I will set it to relative so Usta will calculate the temperament of my Pythagorean tuning according to the root note that I can set in the root and scale uh, parameters in track menu so I will set it to relative nothing changes right now because both my tracks are on C which is the D note uh, but for the zero volt and now I will change the root note of track 1 from C to C sharp you can hear that some notes like this one have now become clearly out of tune because now we are calculating the fifth not on C but on C sharp and this clearly demonstrates the difference between a tuning and a temperament so in a temperament we have all the intervals that are slightly off but we can move freely across all of them and uh, in a tuning our intervals might sound purer but we are more limited as to which note we want to play and that is why we are so obsessed with 12 note scales in the West. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time where we will start talking about tonality.